We recently did an episode on how you can fly into Nicaragua for 2024, and in that we talked about the airport at Managua. Some people had some questions. What about Costa Esmeralda, Nicaragua's other international airport? That's a great question. We're going to go into the little bit of history and who can fly into and what could be happening in the future with Costa Esmeralda. I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Costa Esmeralda Airport is Nicaragua's second busiest airport. It is located in Tola Rivas in the southern region of Nicaragua near the Pacific coast. It was built in 2015 at the peak of the renaissance of tourism in Nicaragua by Grupo Pelas, who was interested in putting it there because that is the center of the new tourism coming into the country, as well as being located directly next to a new giant resort that they had just built or were just about to finish building at the time. I was actually living in Nicaragua in the exact time when they built the airport. It opened in November of 2015 and I was certainly living here then and the airport was, was very exciting because Managua is kind of centrally located and it is a bottleneck to the country. So having another airport that is located rather some distance away uh, that is able to service an area that is very different than Managua. Managua handles business traffic. It handles the generic international traffic coming from long distances, but the area of Rivas along the Pacific coast, known as the Costa Esmeralda or the Emerald Coast, is uh, very popular with enclave dwellers and English speaking expats who are looking at long term retirement or uh, vacation homes or just more luxury, resorty, different from the rest of Nicaragua uh, tourism, including San Juan del Sur and potentially Ometepe. Those are all part of the Rivas zone. So having a, an airport in Rivas that was really designed around servicing that particular audience made a lot of sense. Enough sense that they built the airport in 2015. And for a very short period of time, it was looking like it could get pretty popular. It did have a bit of traffic and it made a bit of sense and there started to be some flights into it. However, there are some things you need to know because people ask questions today. Well, why? don't they uh, open up Esmeralda for international traffic now? Well, the answer is it is open for international traffic now. The amount of traffic you're seeing go to it is the level of interest that there is in that airport, which is extremely little. So let's dig into that. Why? Why would it be so little interest? So first of all, the airport was not built with the intention of bringing in large planes, or in fact, bringing in planes of very large size from much of anywhere at all. So the airport's runway is simply too short for even a reasonably small charter jet coming from, say, the United States. If you were flying in from someplace like somewhere else in Nicaragua, for example, you may be able to get clearance to take a small Learjet, for example, uh, onto customers to Esmeralda, but if that pilot wants to be able to fly in the United States, they cannot land there. It is too short. It's just considered too dangerous. It would only be legal in case of an emergency landing. It's perfectly landable. I've talked to pilots from private charter companies and they say, yeah, I could land on it, but I would lose my license. But is it doable? Yes. Is it risky? A little bit, but it's not terrible. It's not a highly risky location. Um, you're going to, you know, ditch into grass. Like, yeah, it's a little bit risky, but it's not it's not bad, but for serious flights, it would have to be lengthened a bit and that would cost a bit of money, especially now that there isn't very much traffic. But the, the audience that this was really targeting was a very specific luxury audience uh, that was growing in 2015, that was anticipated to be just booming. So there wasn't the existing audience to make this make sense in 2015, but there was enough to begin testing the waters. And that audience grew dramatically in 2016 and 2017. But beginning in 2018, it dropped off instantly. It went off the cliff and almost entirely evaporated to the point where the resort that was supporting the airport itself closed and to the best of my knowledge has no hope of ever returning. Maybe it will. It's not the kind of place you can go check out, but I followed it for a number of years and it looked really, really interesting and then suddenly vanished. Uh, so there are other places that have kind of stepped into that void to some degree, but nothing on the scale that we were looking at in 2015, 2016, and 2017. That, that time period of massive tourism growth with a projection towards more in the future is not looking like it's going to return for a very long time. And so that's very important to understand that the world it was built 
for was one that never came to fruition and now looks like it may never come to fruition, or if it does, is a long way away. At the time, Nicaragua was heavily dedicated to investing in tourism. That was the belief that tourism was the future of the country and that is where they were going. And certainly Nicaragua still puts a lot of effort into tourism, but it is not the main focus. It is no longer believed that the future of Nicaragua lies with tourism. It is not attempting to copycat from uh, Costa Rica, which is essentially what was happening uh, in those early years, about a decade ago. And now they're saying, well, you know, we, we do want to be good for tourism. We're a great destination for tourism. You're welcome to come here and be a tourist. We'd love to have you. But we're really a much more dynamic, robust country than that. We want to have uh, industry, we want to have uh, research, we want to have science, we want to have business, we want to have mining, we want to have all these different things, all these different industries. So focus went from tourism, where they're focusing on airports and hotels and restaurants and, and all those kinds of things and pushing the country as a tourism destination to massive um, infrastructure projects, huge growth in power production, fiber internet all over the country, uh, massive improvements to roads, the ability to move goods from one side of the country to the other. Uh, trains are coming in. Another airport, but one that services the middle of the country and not tourists specifically. Uh, they're looking at new deep water ports, more shipping capability, more ability to move products over land from Costa Rica to Honduras, and so on and so on. These are the things that are really getting the focus over the last several years, and you really notice it around the country. That shift after 2018 is palpable and the country has really revitalized from having this focus on things that are really useful to everyday Nicaraguans rather than things that are focused on servicing foreigners who are coming to visit and then hopefully will trickle down eventually to Nicaraguans, which as we see in Costa Rica does eventually happen and Costa Rica is doing very well, but trying to replicate a Costa Rica when Costa Rica has already uh, established that so nearby does have some advantages, right? We're able to just well, people are there and they say, well, I'd like to see somewhere else. Is this the only thing? Oh, no, there's Nicaragua right there. Let's go. Right. And that's something you should do if you're coming to Costa Rica and you're wondering, can you just hop over to Nicaragua? Absolutely do that. You'll probably find it's really amazing. But if you're uh, looking to really create a giant economy that way, it is very difficult when Costa Rica is the leader in the region and is directly next door. So that makes it very difficult. So Costa Esmeralda Airport was never really intended for the kind of flights that people picture get it getting now, and it's not realistically able to handle that. So it would take an, an, inv an infrastructure upgrade that is just not likely to come because we've now seen that the airport doesn't get very much traffic. Whether it would have eventually in the old days had nothing else changed, Maybe, but in the post-COVID world, there is little to no way that that is going to happen anytime soon, especially now that Nicaragua's new international airport is going north of Lago Managua, or Xolitlan, uh, rather than to the south. And so we're, we're seeing an actual... Uh, move away from Esmeralda rather than a move towards it. Rivas as a region is the one hit biggest by the change in tourism. So of all the parts of the country, even though the, the country itself has so much going on, there's so much booming all around the country, not so much in Rivas. Not that nothing is happening, just the extent of it is not on par with much of the rest of the country because it's more tourism based. So because Esmeralda was designed for that, uh, what it's able to service today is primarily very small hopper flights from around Nicaragua. If you're somewhere in Nicaragua, you have access to a small plane, generally a two to six seater, then flying to Esmeralda is not too much of a problem, especially if that is a prop, not a jet. Jets find the short runway to be a significant problem still possible. If you look at the videos from 2015, when the news was there, yes, there's absolutely small jets that were flying in there. But those jets, if they originated or were terminating in the United States or passing through, would, would be forbidden from going to that airport. They would have to go to Managua. We have the same problem in Leon, but Leon is a non-international airport. It's worth noting that there is a third international airport today in Nicaragua, not talking about the new one that will be opening on the north side of the lake, which is a real airport today. It just is not an international airport, uh, but a, an existing existing international airport is out at Bluefields. It is the third busiest airport in the country. But it takes essentially no international traffic either. It may be upgraded in the future, but it looks like Bluefields is more likely to be upgraded than Esmeralda because Bluefields is not a tourism airport. It is a logistics airport, much like Managua. So it makes more sense, it seems, both in the way that current industry is in Nicaragua and the way that the country is looking to invest, that Bluefields is more likely to get an investment in that direction 
before Esmeralda. And one would have to wonder, maybe Leon would get an investment to move up to an international status before Esmeralda got a lengthened runway to allow it to take more international flights. But if you do want to fly into Esmeralda, yes, you can fly from around Nicaragua, but it's basically all charter flights. There are not simple everyday flights around the country. We're a tiny place. Why fly there? You can just drive. Uh, but if you do want to come in from another country, places like Costa Rica do have flights into Esmeralda, but they are rarely scheduled anymore. They are normally uh, prop-based uh, puddle jumpers. It's very short hops and allows you to just go into a port of entry farther north rather than crossing the border at Peñas Blancas by car. That can be beneficial, but you're looking at probably pretty high price. So it's an extremely rare flight for someone to take, uh, and that is about the only thing that is currently available. In the future, it would be nice if small flights were able to come in from Honduras, Guatemala, especially just a little bit farther away, Panama, or farther in, in Costa Rica, to come into a few small airports in Nicaragua, like Esmeralda and Leon, both that service pretty large areas a bit away from Managua, and they would help offload traffic from Managua, but Managua is already doing that with its own second airport so it's not really the big need that it seems like but the new airport and this is actually really great the new airport is going to be north northeast of Managua on the other side of the lake which means it is dramatically closer to Matagalpa, Esteli, and Hinotega, or even Akatal. All the northern cities can get to that quite a bit before they can get to Managua Airport, and they can do it without crossing through major uh, population zones like Tipitapa, which can just can create traffic, and you don't you have that uncertainty of, well, what if traffic's bad? I'm going to lose half an hour. i got to leave half an hour early on this already couple-hour drive to get to the airport? That's not good, right? So by putting it on the other side of the lake, it makes the entire trip not only shorter and faster, but it also makes it more deterministic. You have a much better chance of gauging how long it's going to take you to get to the airport. For the same reason, while it's no closer for those of us in Leon or Chinandega, it is going to be probably the better choice for us because it allows us to do an equi distant drive, but one without the traffic and potential problems of Managua. And coming from Leon and Chinandega, the amount of Managua that you have to cross is even more, much more than coming from the northern cities. But it is closer to the northern cities, so they will see it as the biggest advantage. You can't put an airport in the northern cities because of the terrain, so they are never going to be getting one. They can have helicopters, but they can't have uh, international flights come in by any stretch. And so it's important for them to have an airport uh, in that direction. So that's a, a great thing for the future, but all of that tends to come at the cost of any consideration for Esmeralda to be growing in the future. Uh, so for those who are interested in Esmeralda, yeah, it's a it's a cool little thing. Yes, it's open today. Yes, it is open for international flights. If you can get a plane and a location that is willing to go there and is you know legally allowed to use such a small runway, what does its future hold? There's every possibility that they will lengthen the runway at some point in the future, but currently the options, the opportunity for that seems to be less and less as more uh, focus, more plausible projects for that investment dollar uh, are happening all around the country. And since the original needs uh, for the airport at Esmeralda do not currently exist and are not believed to be existing anytime in the near future, uh, even if you were to lengthen the runway, even if you were to put in a very big investment into it, I think you would find that the number of people that are honestly willing to make an effort to go to Esmeralda, they're going to pay a premium for it, is almost zero. And until you have that, until you're either bringing in an audience that is unwilling to come into the country now, or you're willing to get an audience that's going to pay a lot more for it, or offloading traffic to Esmeralda is going to significantly save the country money somewhere else, you're not going to justify any work on it because it doesn't make any money. It's going to lose money or break even. That's not a way to do an investment. For those who are wondering, Esmeralda Airport is located near the beach about halfway through Rivas. This makes it a pretty good location for landing in Rivas. It's in a popular area, but relatively remote. So you're not super close, but not bad, to the city of Rivas itself. The city of Rivas would use it as its local airport, but it's not a big deal. The ferry to Ometepe comes from San Jorge, a suburb of Rivas, so that is very accessible from there. It is located a little ways north of San Juan del Sur, but in a region where driving around is a little bit 
cumbersome, and so it's not as close to San Juan del Sur as you'd hope, but it's not terrible. Uh, and all the beaches in that area have a hard time getting from one to another. Now, once the new Pacific Coast Highway comes in, everything will change, and all of that will be more accessible to them to each other, and that will make that airport a little bit more uh, generally accessible throughout the region, which could make it make more sense. But it's also going to make that entire region more accessible to Managua Airport and Liberia Airport, which may in turn defeat the value of Esmeralda Airport. So we're going to have to see how that plays out once that is in place. But that brings up the important question. If you live in that region, even if you live in Tola itself, which, yes, if you live in Tola, you want Esmeralda to be operational because your airport may be five or ten minutes away. Who doesn't want a small, convenient airport five or ten minutes away? That's fantastic, of course. But other than those, but even those, they're less than two hours to Managua Airport and only about two hours to Liberia Airport in Costa Rica, both of which are quite large airports with well-established infrastructures. They have things like local hotels and taxis and restaurants and shopping and customs and all kinds of things that make them very convenient and easy to use and lots of big airlines scheduled to go all over the world. Even if Esmeralda was upgraded, even if it became popular, you're going to see at most, maybe at a stretch sometime in the future, one American Airlines flying in once a week kind of thing, if you're lucky. All we're really hoping for is a every other day hopper flight into Costa Rica. That would be nice. But is there enough traffic down there to justify that? I doubt it. But maybe. Maybe at the height of the season and not at other times. It's hard to really say. Maybe there could be something justified. But it is, it is very difficult for people who live in the region to justify going to Esmeralda if you live in San Juan del Sur. Well, yeah, you may be 30 minutes away from Esmeralda. I didn't check the map for the exact driving time, but that 30 minutes applied towards Liberia may very well make sense. Liberia is going to be much cheaper and have way more flights and options both on the ground and in the air. And so why would you really be interested in Esmeralda? Closer is always nice, but like so many things in Nicaragua, when people, especially who don't live here, are like, well, why don't they do this? Why don't they, they do that? It'd be great if they, if you're actually here on the ground, you're like, well, that's not really a problem to solve. Like, I get that Esmeralda would be closer and that'd be a nicer feature to have for people who live there, but are the people who already live there struggling with a lack of airport options? No, not at all. The Rivas zone sits always anywhere in Rivas is close to Managua Airport, as close or closer than we are here in Leon and close to Liberia Airport in Costa Rica, way closer than we are here in Leon. So they're already the region of the country with some of the best airport access. Obviously, living in Managua proper is the best, and Messiah, Granada, there's a few cities that are definitely better, but only because they can access Managua so well. Anything that is from Hinotepe down to San Juan del Sur, that is a zone where you have access to Managua and Liberia both really easily, and so they're in the prime position in the country already even if Esmeralda didn't exist. So adding Esmeralda for them, sure, they might, especially those who are directly in the middle, find it beneficial. It'll never have the kind of benefits that people who don't live here imagine that it will. The airport thing is already solved. It's not terrible. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. You're talking about remote areas. Imagine if you were in the United States and you lived just at a very slow drive, not a high-speed highway drive, but a slow drive through the country, just two hours to an international airport in one country to the north, and two hours drive to an international airport in another country to the south. That would be really good. Most rural areas in the United States would be really thankful to have those kinds of access. Even people who live in Omaha, Nebraska, who watch the channel, know that they, living right in the city of Omaha, have very little better access to an airport, and if you want to actually get somewhere, it's worse and much more expensive. So this is not a bad situation. It's not a problem that someone wants to solve. It was an opportunity that may have come to fruition and simply did not. So that is where we are with Costa Esmeralda Airport. Um, feel free to give it a try if you want to try flying in there. If you think it would be a cool place to go, I'm sure if you can manage to charter into there, it could be really handy if you're staying in Tola, Popoyo, San Juan del Sur, and other uh, beach areas in that area, or if you're looking at living in Rivas, Ometepe, San Jorge, all very nice areas. There's lots of opportunity there. And that brings us to just my final point, is that the island of Ometepe used to have an airport. Not international, just a local one that allowed you to hop primarily to Managua, and would have been expected to hop into Esmeralda, certainly, at some point, that airport has permanently closed. So that it was, at one time, at the time that Esmeralda was built, 
open and operating, that gave a lot of additional power or reason behind Esmeralda because the people who were staying on the beach in those resorts, whether they're just tourists or they were locals who live there, expats who live there full time, having an easy airport to take a puddle jumper from there, not have to take the ferry in San Jorge, meant no taxis, no drives, no ferry, a whole bunch of things got easier. And so, and because those are two really major tourist zones, having that access to just have a, a quick little shuttle from the resorts to go to Esmeralda Airport, take you right over to Ometepe, and then take you to whatever resort on Ometepe, that was a potential future amazing option for tourists in the region. But Ometepe has closed indefinitely. There is no plans to reopen it. And honestly, I don't think it makes sense to reopen. And I really hope that they don't reopen it. My hope is that they reclaim the airport and use it for a combination of a few more hotels and restaurants where it's closer to the road and where it's farther from the road, either let it be reclaimed by the jungle or, more likely, turn it into additional farmland and just take out the tarmac. There is space there to grow a bit of crops, uh, maybe have some livestock. It is a farming island, um, but put in more nice stuff by the road. You could increase the population handling capacity of the island to make it better for tourism, make it generate more money, and make it more beautiful by not having an airport in the middle of the island. It is interesting that you have to drive across the airport runway as you take the loop road around the island, but other than being a curiosity and being similar to uh, the Gibraltar in southern Spain, it is mostly goofy and definitely not super attractive. It's something that could be removed with a great improvement for everyone living on the island. So that is my idea for that, and I do not foresee any possibility of that airport being reopened. But new ferry service has been going in, so the boat access to the island has improved, which again makes the need for flights into the island even less. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. As always... We really appreciate everyone who's watching the show. Take a moment to watch another show after this one. That tells YouTube everything it needs to know about how much you love the show. I appreciate everyone joining us today. I will see all of you tomorrow. And now we're going to pop up on the screen four videos that are somehow related to this one. Normally, it's our shows from one year ago today, two years ago today, and so forth. And if we don't have enough of those, we'll put in some stuff on flights and airports and something related. So enjoy that. If you click on one of those, it helps us out a lot.